you may think we were out in the dense jungles of Thailand again. Well, not quite. Today we are in the concrete jungles of Bangkok, Thailand, looking for snakes right along some canals next to a bunch of people's houses, and one species I'm searching for in particular that is near and dear to my heart. This is a juvenile puff-faced or skull-faced water snake. I've been spotting a few along this trail, and what I want to do is catch a large one. Big ol' puff-faced water snake, or the other name that I prefer, the skull-faced water snake. Maybe you can pick up what that looks like. Now I do have to restrain this animal. It is a bit venomous. We don't really know how potent they are, but it's definitely not fatal. And she's a bit of a biter. See? Ugh, stay still. Now I fished her out from a little cranny in this pond here, well this lake. Oof. Now they are a rear fanged venomous snake spending all of their time in the water but they can move easily on land. They're eating mostly fish, frogs. I mean they can get bigger than this. We've been finding juveniles along this little stream. About time we got an adult here. Now I'm gonna zoom to a close-up shot after this. These snakes are built like an aquatic pit bull. And to put it into better perspective, they resemble a mini version of an anaconda, living the same lifestyle, mostly aquatic and submerged, moving from one body of water to the next when needed. The pattern on these snakes resemble the overhanging tree roots and floating branches. Very muscular and beefy body, easily able to overpower large prey, and their rough edged scales actually help with constricting slippery fish or eels as well as their very large and sharp teeth they possess rear fangs as well but the potency is unknown scientists estimate that it isn't effective on us causing only massive swelling and pain but it is much more potent to fish a very awesome species indeed to show you guys but not the target of tonight we're searching for the master hunter of these waters, so let's release this animal and continue on our search. This next snake is definitely rare, and you're about to find out why. Try to spot this snake in this video here. Do you see it? Right there. What about this next video here? Can you see it? Right over there. After a lot of trial, jumping into these ponds, we have finally managed to catch one species of snake that has eluded me for my entire lifetime until a few weeks ago when I did find one but the excitement just took control of me and I just marveled the snake, forgot to take a video, forgot to take pictures, and we let it go. All right, don't bite me, I'm gonna let you go. In a second, I just wanna talk about you and how cool you are. This is a tentacled snake, Erpaton tentaculatum. Very different from other snakes. This is the only snake in the world with tentacles and they actually serve a function they're not just for display they're not just for camouflage even though they help immensely tentacled snakes have a use for their odd stubby mustaches there are actually clusters of nerve cells in the middle each one linking up to the region in their brain that receives optic signals helping the snake sense vibrations in the water in total darkness or through the murk what they do is they can actually anticipate where their prey is headed, striking where the fish will be instead of where the fish is, a technique which is super unique in the snake world and is only executed by these tentacled snakes. 
a marvel to look at. Isn't that cool? Look at that belly pattern. Completely blends in like any other root or twig in the water. And most of the fish at night are gonna wanna come to the sides of the pond, hide under some roots. They think it's safe from predators and that's when they run into these guys. These are mildly venomous rear fang snakes in the Colubridae family. They're not deadly. They're not gonna send you to the hospital or anything. They're very fragile. They're primarily aquatic. They spend all of their time in the water, but they can move from pond to pond when food is scarce or when they feel like it. So this animal is not like a fish. I can have it on land, it breathes oxygen. And I think we've marveled at it enough. It's best if we let her go. And she looks like she was hunting more fish when uh, before I caught her, so. Back she goes. Hope you find a big old fish tonight. Now I can't show you any footage of these odd creatures hunting in the wild, but I can show you a clip of one that I own taking down a fish. Now keep in mind, all of this takes place underwater, so there is no sound. But I tried my best to dub over what was going on. I'm a fish minding my own business, hanging out with other fishes. Oh, oh my god, where's oh, Jeff? No, oh. What happened to Jeff, bro? Oh, Lord. oh my titalos. Why? Oh, it's just a stick. Do, 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 Must do, have do, been the wind. This species was one of my favorites to read about as a young kid, getting into snakes. Seeing the first one in the wild in my 20s was truly a joy, and it was exciting beyond measure, especially when I forgot to take any pictures or videos of the first encounter. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed this little episode. See you in the next one. Bye bye!